Hey everyone, welcome to Easy SAP ABOP. Today's episode, we're going to really quickly cover lock objects. So what the hell are lock objects? Lock objects are a wonderful invention by SAP. Uh, they're used all over the place. You, for example, have one user try and edit uh, an object, say for example, a sales order. And then another user comes behind them and tries to edit the same sales order. Well, you're going to get a, an error message saying you can't edit this sales order because user you know, A has it locked. They're currently working in it. So we oftentimes want to be able to do this same behavior with custom tables or with, you know, maybe standard SAP tables where there's not already a lock object that exists. So how do we do this? Well, we go to transaction SE11 and we create a lock object. So a lock object has a particularly weird naming convention. It has to start with an E. And then we usually start it with a Z. Well, it needs to be EZ. And then we can put it wherever we want after that. So I'm going to create one for table S book. Let's open up SE16 and look at S book. S book is a table in the test data model, the flight data model. It has key fields of client, carrier ID, connection ID, and flight date. So if we try to create a lock object, with this easy s book we can go ahead and give it a name i'll just say test lock object for table s book then i'm just going to do allow rfc well actually we'll just go ahead and enter the table now s book i'm going to click allow rfc if you don't understand what this is it's safe to leave it unchecked but i'm just going to do it for this this purpose of this tutorial uh, lock mode. We have different lock modes that we can use. So if we click F1 while we're over over lock mode, we can look at what these different you know modes mean. Uh, shared lock. We got exclusive locks, exclusive but not cumulative locks. So let's just create a for this purposes. Let's go ahead and create just a regular write lock. Okay, so now if we go to lock parameter, we'll see the key fields from table S book. So now our lock object is ready to be used. So we can actually assign it to a package. I'll just assign it as a local object. I'm not going to transport it. Click on check, click on activate. And then once it's checked and activated, we can go to this go to lock modules. So what this does, it shows us the generated function modules for our lock objects. So NQ easy S book and DQ easy S book. Let's go ahead and test this. Let's create, let's open up transaction SE 37 and we want to call our NQ easy S book, which does the physical acquiring of the lock. Click on test. And then we have to pass in parameters Well, we saw the key fields of S book are now parameters for our um, module, our lock module, our NQ lock module. So what I'm going to do is just go over here, left hand side of the screen, I'm testing our lock module, our NQ function, right hand side of the screen, I'm going to go to SE16, and we'll open up transaction S book, just to get some of some of this data we can use to test it. So carrier ID, let's use the first one. AA, connection ID, 0017, flight date, 2017. I guess I can enter it in the way that the system is formatted as a date. And our booking ID, 0001. So now if I hit F8, I can see everything was successful. But I can open up another session, go to transaction SM12. What SM12 does us does for us is it gives us a list of all locks in the SAP system. So I can either filter by table ID, I can say S book, or I can run it wide open and see all locks in the system. Now, if I click on or I hit enter, I'll see we do have a lock. These are the arguments to a lock, which was our carrier ID, flight date, booking ID. It's held by user developer, which is my username. So now, if I open up another instance, SE37, I'm sorry for all the sessions I have here, guys, but let's just go ahead and open up another instance of our lock module and say same parameters, carrier ID, 
Our connection ID was 0017. Flight date was 1219, 2017. Our booking ID was number one and hit F8. So what we see happen is how we're gonna handle this in our code. We're going to have an exception, foreign lock, and we're gonna have the message value, object requested is currently locked by user developer. So what we're gonna do essentially in our code is call this NQ underscore easy S book. Then we're going to check the return value of sy dash sub rc. If it's not zero, we can assume that the object has already been locked by another user if this exception foreign underscore lock is raised. And then we know not to touch the data in the table that that user is already accessing. So we can, you know, prevent another user from entering the same change mode or whatever we need to do to keep them from touching that lock. So this is what happens when you call NQ twice with the same parameters without that lock being released. I can refresh. I see that lock is still good. So now let's go to transaction SE 37 and test our DQ underscore EZ S book. We'll call it with the same parameters, carrier ID AA, connection ID 0017, flight date was 2017. 1219 and our booking ID was one. Call this. Ooh. Wrong date format. 12, 19, 2017. F8. We get it all good. There's no return code. And if I refresh our lock entry list, well, I think I have to actually back out of this test screen. But if I refresh our lock entry list, I should see that lock is now gone. So we know at this point that we're able to go ahead and modify that data in the table because it's no longer locked. So again, very simple. We just go into SC11, create our lock object, which starts with EZ or EY. Anything, you know, it has to begin with an E and then it has to be in the customer namespace after that. We create it, we give it, you know, these attributes. Really all we have to do here is allow RFC or not. Um, RFC is remote function calls, so if you know what that means, you'll definitely want to consider that. Um, choose this lock mode. Again, do some reading on that. Just F1 over the field. It'll tell you everything you need to know. And if you have any additional questions, there are plenty of blogs on the subject. Lock parameters. This just essentially ensures that we uniquely identify that row of the table, so we're not locking more than we need to or you know anything like that. Um, once we activate it, we click our activate. We go to go to lock modules and we can see the names of our function modules that are generated for us. They're all going to begin with NQ underscore name of lock object and DQ underscore name of lock object. And that NQ is always going to request a lock for that. DQ is always going to request to release that lock. Again, check your SY dash sub RC after calling that to make sure that the object has been released or there isn't a current lock on it and you're good to write your data. So. That's a very brief overview. Uh, we can get a little more technical with some of these, but if you guys don't have any questions, I won't bore you all with this. So, you know, please feel free to leave questions in the comments section. Thank you all so much for watching as usual. If you have any suggestions for an upcoming video, something that I haven't covered, maybe something that I have covered, but you think deserves more explanation, as always, leave a comment. I'll try and get it as soon as I can. Thank you guys. Hit subscribe if this video really helped you out and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.